<clears throat> coming today. This is a this is a great a great moment, intriguing, fascinating, historic, and I just a, a few things to say before we have some folks that have some words. But I just want to remind everybody that I've said this a lot of times. You may have heard it before. But when we have people come from around the world looking to invest hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, looking for a place, you notice more and more of them will find in this place. And you also notice a lot of people that have a house here and a house there also want to have one in South Carolina. In fact, they told me you can, if you hurry, you can get a real nice $2 million house down on the low country for about $4 million if you go down there <laughs> right now. But I just want to remind everybody, and I want to show you, this is the source. If you want to know about this state, this is where you start. Where's, where's Dr. Emerson? You can go. Where do you go? Right here. Yeah, you can ask him and go out, go out to archives. Or you can get you this book by Walter Edgar. This is the copy I keep here. I don't have it marked up, but the one I have at the house, it got scribbling all over it because I'm trying to learn more about the state. And if, that's, if you need to go a little deeper, here's your encyclopedia by Dr. Walter Edgar as well. But here's what he'll tell you. How did we get the way that we are? We came over the years, different times, different circumstances, different conditions. Originally, now this is after the Spanish tried to take over and then after the French tried and they were fighting. This was back in the 14, 1500s. We have more consequential history in our state than any other state in this country. Nobody else even comes close. We were here at the beginning. We are, now we are strong and everything that has happened anywhere, it, all of it has happened here at one time or another. We came from where eight European countries uh, on, almost or up to 25 West African cultures, because those, those were the enslaved people, which now comprise four countries there in West Africa. And over 25 Native Americans or Indian tribes, nations, were already here. In fact, the archaeologists go back, I think, Dr. Emerson, if I'm right, I think the most recent discovery goes back 50,000 years somewhere along the Savannah River. But all those people at different times under different conditions for different reasons, religious, economic, uh, trying to uh, escape persecution and otherwise, and some, of course, didn't want to come. But here we are, and we've been through every war. We've, we've seen everything that's happened from wars to hurricanes to floods to everything. And we, right now, are on the top of the world. At the time of the Revolutionary War, this was the richest colony of them all. Then we came turmoil, but, but here we are. And it is because of that, I believe, since we have seen everything, since we have learned to live with people that don't look like us, don't talk like us, got a different language, all those sorts of things, different religions, we have a, a culture that is strong and is accepting. And according to these people that I meet with, that want to invest their business, hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars, a new one today, 800 million down in Aiken. That's a lot of money. If somebody make a mistake, they might lose the job. The company might go broke. But they say this, and I've heard it was Mark Clark at the, he was a great general in World War II, later president of the Citadel, said there's more patriotism per square inch in this place than any place in the world. And it was the chairman of BMWR, the CEO that met with Governor Campbell in South Carolina in 1992 when they were trying to decide where BMW was going to put their largest, most successful plant in the whole world, and they decided to come here, they were meeting and they had teams talking commerce, and at that time is the development board, I think they called it, with a team from BMW, and they weren't getting anywhere. It was too complicated, so they went to the mansion, sat down by the pool, and had a, something, a beverage, <laughs> just for them, the governor, the boss, and two, two aides, and they wrote out their deal on a cocktail napkin, two or three sentences, and shook hands, and that was the deal. And it was written in the papers back then that the BMW leader said it was, our deal was based on a handshake. 
Fast forward 25 years up in Spartanburg, 20, the 25th anniversary of BMW, the chairman or the CEO, one, said then, South Carolina's a handshake state. He said, I'd rather have your hand in mine and your word than a signed contract. Now that's the reputation. Also, you go buy something at a convenience store and the lady behind the counter will call you honey, sweetie, darling, dear, something <laughs> before you get out. But I'm telling you, that is, it's not like that everywhere. They got the great people everywhere, the great states, but there's no place like this place. And you need, we need to learn about it and to celebrate it because it's very important. And what we're doing today with this man, Robert Smalls, is one more piece of important crucial history that people that people need to know about. We have a fantastic history, and our history is what makes us, what we've been through, what we know, our, our land, our water, the geography, all of that is what makes us what we are. And if we learn how strong we are, learn the potential we have, then for all these children sitting here, their, their future will be bright as it can be. So, I'd like to ask now Representative, who's coming up? Johnson? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Governor. I am Representative Jermaine Johnson. I represent House District 70, uh, but it will soon be House District 52. You know, I want to start off by thanking everybody for being here today. You know, when I was approached a couple of years ago uh, by my friend, Representative Brandon Cox, uh, about doing this, this monument here or, or trying to get this passed, you know, it was one of those things where I didn't even hesitate. It was, yes, let's get this thing done. Let's do what we have to do, and let's make sure that we talk to whoever we need to talk to. Let's make sure we try to convince whoever we need to convince. Let's do everything we uh, have to do. And up to the very last moment, the very final day, we were talking to people. We were making sure that things were happening. I was talking to my Democratic colleagues. He was talking to his Republican colleagues. And we were ensuring that this piece of legislation would make it across the finish line. And I don't think in our wildest dreams that either one of us thought that this thing would not be uh, passed with not only just a unified, just a unanimous vote, not on the, just on the House side, but also on the Senate side. So that, if you know anything about politics, you know that doesn't happen very often. A lot of times they use bills as leverage and they wanna, they wanna hold things hostage and do things like that. But this piece of, of legislation proved to be uniting. It was a united front. And when this thing passed the House, myself and Representative Cox, we stood there at the well and we hugged and we embraced. And we did not embrace as colleagues. We didn't embrace as friends. We embraced as brothers. We embrace as brothers under the one unified thing that we want to get accomplished this year. And what you are looking at here today, my Republican colleagues, my Democratic colleagues, my black, my white, my women, my men, this is a South Carolina that we believe in. This is a South Carolina, what we all know that we want to strive for. This is a South Carolina that our young people deserve. They deserve this from us. And in a few short years, we're gonna be able to sit under the gaze of not only a South Carolinian who's a hero, but an American hero, an individual who fought for all of us, an individual who we all benefit from today. This individual will be somebody that we get to look at and say, you know what, look at this amazing man, what he did for me. Now you all are looking at my tie here today. I personally chose this tie. This is a tie that my children got, to, got for me for Father's Day. And it's got all four of their pictures on this tie. And I did that because I want my children to know how important they are to me so they can know from whence they come, from who they are, and where they're going. Not only I don't want my children to just see this statue that's going to be outside this amazing monument, but I want the children here to know about who this individual was. And I want every because this will be a historical time for all of us here. This is going to be a monumental time for everybody. And I'm just so honored, I'm so blessed to be a part of this process. I'm honored and blessed to be here amongst all of you all. And I thank the governor for making this a priority to make sure that this happened at this time is of this in this state and in this nation, a polarized nation right now. 
let the other states around this country look at us as an idea, as, as, a, as a way to continue to work together, put their differences aside, and let's make things better for our young people in the future. So God bless you all and thank you. Let me move this down a little bit here. <laughs> well, that's going to be very hard to follow. But uh, thank you very much. This was very much a team effort. Like Representative Johnson said, this is unanimous in the House and the Senate. Uh, a lot of hard work uh, went into this. This is a sign of South Carolina and our future. And I'm very proud to be a part of it. Thank you very much. What a glorious day in South Carolina. I want to thank the governor um, for the opportunity to speak today on this um, tremendous occasion. It's rare that we add something to this great living museum around us, and that's our state house grounds. It's living history around us. However, today we add to a chapter to that story that we tell on these grounds. And we're here today to commemorate the passage of the bill that was passed that honors the remarkable life and legacy of a true hero, Robert Smalls, by establishing a monument in his name. It is symbolic that not too long ago, just about nine years ago, when Clemente Pinckney passed, that the Confederate flag came down shortly thereafter. Amen. And then now it's the first time we have an African-American man that goes up on the state house grounds, the first individual to go up there, and how deserving is he for this? Robert Smalls was a man whose courage, determination, and unwavering commitment to freedom and justice had left an indelible mark on both our state and nation's history. Just a little bit of history. Born in slavery, his daring escape to freedom aboard the Confederate ship, the planter, is a story that has inspired generations and seems more like a script from Hollywood or a blockbuster movie than something that from the pages of a South Carolina history book, Governor, which is critical. But it is our history and one that needs to be better known so that we can make his legacy of courage our example. His story did not end with that single act of bravery when he turned the planter to the Union blockade. As a state representative serving in these halls, as a state senator, Senator, thank you for being here from Rock Hill, Senator from, Rock, from York. And as a U.S. Congressman, Robert Smalls dedicated his life to continuing his acts of bravery, fighting for the causes of equality, education, and opportunity for all. And it's fitting that we honor him with a monument that will stand as a testament to those who visit the people's house of this enduring project. He authored the legislation here that was the first free and compulsory public education for South Carolina, but did it first in the country. The founder of the South Carolina Republican Party. How historical. I hope that the monument that we construct will not only serve as a tribute to Robert Small's extraordinary achievements, but also a reminder as to his resilience and strength of the human spirit and what one can achieve if he or she is willing to fight for what they believe in. I hope that this monument will also stand as a symbol of the progress that we have made in this state and as a call to continue the work that Robert Small spent his, in life, his lifetime doing, which is building a more just and equitable society. By passing this bill, Representative Cox, and authorizing this monument, we acknowledge the importance of preserving and sharing the stories of those who have fought for the ideals that define our beloved state. It is through remembering our past by learning from the past that together we can shape a better future. It gives us a message, South Carolina, that it's never too late to be what you could have become. I want to share the pride I have for those who have worked together on this project to honor Robert Smalls and have it enacted. And Governor, thank you for signing it. Lieutenant Governor Abbott, thank you for, for your role in doing this. And thank you, South Carolina and the United States for this United States hero where we've worked together, both black and white, 
Republican and Democrat, and as they said, unanimously passed both bodies, 99 to zero in the House, 44 to zero in the Senate. I think that message of working together is one that would make Robert, Small, Robert Smalls proud. It would make him smile and would validate the work that we, he strove here in South Carolina. So as we celebrate this occasion, let us remember the words of Robert Smalls himself, and this is critical. My race needs no special defense, for the past history of them in this country proves them to be equal of any people anywhere. All they need is an equal chance in the battle for life. So with the signing of this bill, we take a step forward, providing an equal chance. Not only for our state house grounds, but for the chance that for people like me, I have a grandson that's 10 months old, Marshall. He's the only thing in life that I know that's not overrated. <laughs> <laughs> and those children will get a chance as generations come to pass that they'll see that monument on those state house grounds and they might learn from the bravery of Robert Smalls. They will learn about his commitment and hopefully be inspired by one of South Carolina's favorite sons, a real hero, Robert Smalls. Thank you, South Carolina, for this erecting this monument. We are hopeful, as a member of this committee, that we'll end up controlling and working on the narrative and putting together a project that would make all of South Carolina very proud and symbolic of the life that this man lived and the work that he has done. Thank you. Good job, sir. So how does somebody follow those three orators? Huh? How do you follow three politicians who are so gifted at, at, at basically bringing their arguments to the podium? Um, it's a pleasure to be here to honor this great man. And so I'll just bring a, a little perspective of historic preservation to you. Many of you don't know, but you are standing today in a national historic landmark the highest designation that the National Park Service can give to a structure in the United States. This state house is one of those. The period of significance, and, and I won't go into why this is the period of significance, but it's 1869 to 1877. So how appropriate that the foremost African-American politician for nearly a century, who made the greatest mark on his state within these walls, how appropriate is it that he would have a monument on these state house grounds. For too long, we have overlooked that. This nomination was written in 1970. No one proposed that in 1970, that that should be the case. It's really a wonderful thing that we've finally gotten around to doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Uh, uh, before we have questions, these gentlemen in inspired me. I remembered something that I ought to tell you because it's evidence of what they were saying. And that is where the, the um, U.S. Department of Commerce was, had a lot of money to give for innovation and technology hubs, looking into the future, what's coming next. And all the states were asked to provide applications for the funding. And some states provided two or three applications. We picked one, and it was power, because we know we need power for everything we're doing, because we're growing, and everything depends on electric power. So we sent ours in. All the other states, there were 399 others. We sent one. Well, I, I went up to Washington to meet with our congressional delegations, delegation and had the presidents and representatives of the universities, the technical colleges, we had a whole crowd up. And we told them what we were doing and told them we needed their help. Well, we knew that it had been whittled down to, I think it was about 30 or so. And then we got the later on, and this was just a couple of months ago, we got a call from Secretary uh, Regina Raimondo. She had been the, I'd met her when she was a governor of Rhode Island, but now she's the Secretary of Commerce. So she called, and I was on the phone in my office right down the hall, and Senator Lindsey Graham was on the phone in his office in Washington, and Congressman Jim Clyburn was on his phone in his office in Washington. So there we were, and we were talking, and we explained how 
we were ready. We had been ready. We had started going in that direction and formed some, an organization called Power SC months before that. So we were ready. And we explained it to her, and she listened. And towards the end of the conversation, which lasted, I guess, 15 minutes, Senator Graham, as he usually does, starts cutting up, and we, we were laughing and kidding and all that. <clears throat> but when we got ready to finish, Secretary Romano says, gentlemen, since I've been in this office, this is the first bipartisan conference like this I have had. And I said, well, that's how we do it here. <laughs> and here we are again, and we're going to do it some more. So this is, this is a, a, great, a, a great symbol, a great indicator of our strength and what we can do and will do. Does anyone have a question, press questions for anyone? Hearing none, let's move to the table. I forgot to say it's $45 million. <laughs> <laughs>